Welcome, everybody. Um, this is Teaching Tuesdays. We started this uh, last week, actually, as an opportunity to kind of give back and uh, just do these small kind of teaching sessions once a week is our goal, uh, just for about a half hour. Um, no sales, nothing like that. It's just, you know, 15, maybe 20 minutes of teaching on different topics and, um, and then 10 or 15 minutes on questions either about the topic or any question you might have whatsoever. We're more than happy to answer it. And if we can't, we'll get the answer for you. Um, so this is brought to you by, as you can see on my screen, is Passive Cash Flow for Life, um, which is um, Nicole and mine's um, teaching for multifamily. And this is came, kind of where it came from. We built a meetup around it, and then we keep thinking of ways to, to give back. Um, whether you're a student or not, it doesn't matter. You know, our goal is really to try and educate um, I know that uh, Nicole had some people help her out when 25 years ago when she started, and uh, she'd helped me out five years ago when I started, or six years ago. I can't remember how much it is that now, how much it is now. So the whole idea here is to kind of pay it forward. So, um, all right, why don't we go ahead and get started? And I'm going to let me see if I can do this. I'm going to stop my video, but hopefully you can still me. Let's see, share screen, desktop share. All right. So, um, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Your thumbs up. Yes. Okay. All right. Awesome. So, yeah. um, there are a lot of things a financial calculator can do that a regular ca calculator can't do. Um, we're just going to go over some basic stuff, um, just to give you an idea of um, a little bit of the power of what just tweaking. A percentage rate on a loan or tweaking the amortization um, uh, time frame can really make quite a big difference on your deals. We're going to use smaller deals, but um, if you think about some of the bigger deals, you know, um, some of those, it can be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars just shaving half a point off of an interest rate, right? But I wanted to keep it small so it's more um, relatable. So this is the financial calculator that, that I use. Um, when I first met Nicole, she had like the old kind of like um, uh, the calculator that, that is actually you hold in your hand. It's a separate piece of equipment, right? Um, and I was like, oh my God, I don't want that. Now I got to carry two things. So I found this online. Um, it's uh, by a company called In A Day Development. It's actually, I can't remember if it's an HP or a TI, but 10B2 is what we use. And you can get this. On, I got mine on the... Um, on the Apple store, but you can get an Android, you get Microsoft and this down here, I actually bought um, for another six bucks, which is obviously very cheap. Um, I bought another one um, for the computer so I could share this with you guys because I didn't want to do it on my phone. I thought that would be too small. And the nice thing about these guys is that they've been around for a while. Um, the stuff does a ton of different things besides we're going to talk about. And what's nice about what they do is they actually have videos Right, which you can actually watch and say, you know something? Okay, James taught me this, so I get that. How about the time value of money or statistics or something else as you get deeper into it? Um, it's totally up to you, but they're a really great company. We've always had a great success. We've never had a glitch with our product. Um, so um, anyway, we just recommend it. I put the link in there for everybody if you want to. It's not an affiliate. We don't get anything for it. It's just you know where we got ours. So um, all right, so let's see. Um, all right, so this is the calculator. And of course, now I've got to get, let me, uh, let's see. I got to get all the people's screens off of my screen if I can. Oh, there you go. That works. Oh, actually, it doesn't. Uh, hold on. Um, all right, we'll just do it this way. This will work. I got all the boxes with everyone's. Uh, stuff on there and see oh, okay that'll work even better perfect okay um so i can't see your pictures right now because i have to move them so if you have a question as we go along feel free jump in just um ask okay just unmute yourself and ask we've got a small enough crowd that we can do that and i don't think anybody will step on anybody else so so anyway so this is what the calculator looks like whether it's on your phone or it's on your computer um, obviously, if it's on your phone, it'll be more, you know, up and down and on the laptop, it's more left to right. Um, these are the boxes or fields that we're going to be using. 
Um, N is number of months for your amortization. So if you go and get a standard residential mortgage, it's 30 years. What this is asking you is how many periods are in each year. So 360 months is 30 years. Um, so just keep in mind that this is, you want to put in months, not years. This is obvious, it's interest rate. Um, this is present value. So this would be the value of the mortgage. Um, and then payment would be obviously the payment. And then future value is when the mortgage gets paid off. It's zero, obviously. So that's kind of where we're starting. So um, a couple of things you'll notice down here, you got a blue button and an orange button. The orange button is for all these fields underneath. Okay, we're going to use this one, amortization. We're going to talk about that a little bit. You've got these other ones here as well. And then you've got the blue ones, which are obviously much more advanced. Um, and then what you want to do is um, you can either clear, right? So you can just clear this piece up here, right? Or if you want to clear everything, then you want the bottom one, right? The orange one. So orange and then say it comes up. So clear all. So clear all. Um, all right. So um, we're going to use an example. It's actually a real property. Um, this is before I met Nicole. It's in Minneapolis, um, uh, Minnesota. Um, it's actually 64 units. Um, it's on our course, but we changed the address <laughs> just to try and keep our properties private, uh, but it is a real property. Um, so anyway, 64 units, uh, price was 3.2. So about 55,000 a unit, I think is what that comes out to. And we're going to finance, or we did finance 75% of that. Okay. So we're just going to play around with the numbers a little bit. So, so 3.2, right? So, uh, move this bar out of the way too, if I can. Okay, so three, two, uh, move it up here. Um, okay, so 3.2 million, right? Put 25% down. You can find places to let you put down 20%. Sometimes you want to put a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on what your um, return on investment is going to end up being. So in our instance, we put down 25%. Uh, so that left us with a loan for 2,400,000, all right? So you wanna enter this into present value. This is the value of the loan. Now this is the one weird thing, um, which takes a little bit of getting used to. This has to be a negative number. And I think the reason they do this is because they want you to understand that on a balance sheet, this is a liability, right? So this is a negative number when you add up your net worth or whatever it may be. So you come over here and every time you do something with um, uh, with uh, the present value, the value of the mortgage, you always want to put a negative. See the negative right there? And then we'll go ahead and enter it into present value. And then it fits in right there. I'm still trying to get all these boxes out of the way. I'm not used to it. I should use my bigger screen. All right. So, okay. Um, and then in this instance, um, uh, we're going to say 25 years, right? So 25 years is 300 months. So we're going to go ahead and enter that. So uh, 300 months, we're going to put it in there. 6% um, um, interest is uh, what we were offered. So 6% interest. Um, and then you do the math and your payment is 15.4, right? So Again, not a huge property, not a small property either. You know, um, it's 64 units, um, but, you know, it's 3 million is, is a little bit small. But, you know, some people start off with a quad or a five unit or something like that. Totally cool. Wherever you want to start, everyone starts at different places. Um, so whatever you want to do, this applies to anything, whether it's a $500,000 deal or a $50 million deal. All these numbers apply. So um, when you're doing your pro forma or putting your plan together for the bank or for your own analysis, you're going to do stuff by the year, right? So this is a monthly amount, 15,463. So we're going to multiply that times 12. And that gives us our annual carry on mortgage um, uh, payments. Anything below this line, obviously, is our cash flow. The more we can make this or the smaller we can make this, the more we have in cash flow for ourselves and for our investors. So it's incredibly important to kind of tweak it as best you can. So in, uh, in our example, we actually found someone that actually gave us um, uh, 30 years um, of uh, amortization. So 360, remember before it was 185, right? Um, it's a number of years. 
And then um, we found someone that gave us 5% interest. All right, so the payment now is 12, eight. So times 12. All right, 154, we're 185 before. So that's $31,000 in savings, which isn't bad, you know, when you think about it. Um, and I'll mention this later, but, you know, if you're starting off small and you do two or three of these buildings, not only are you getting your cash flow, not only are you building equity and your renters are paying down your mortgage, you're also putting in an extra above cash flow and everything else, an extra 30 grand in your pocket per year. You do two or three of these, you're making an extra 100 grand. So I just want you guys to kind of see the bigger picture. Um, uh, so for that's just one basic example. All right. So um, let's do this. Let's do amortization. I'll show you that right now. So amortization is over here in orange. So click orange, uh, amortization. All right, so I'm sorry this is small. Um, I, I try to actually make it bigger. Hopefully you can read it. Um, but basically this is your amortization schedule and it gives you the basic um, information in the block up at the top, right? So 360 months is what it looks like behind my bar. 5% uh, interest, 2.4 is the note. Um, monthly payment is 12, future value is zero. Um, and then what's interesting here, and if any of you have ever uh, sat down and bought your first house, whether it's an investment or uh, a home, you know that this totally throws you, right? I mean, you're paying 3.2 for the property, 2.4 of that is a mortgage, and you're going to pay over $2 million in interest. So by the time everything's said and done, on top of your down payment, you're paying $4.6 million for this property. Now, having said that, in real estate, as you probably know, debt is a good thing because you can leverage it, right? Rather than going out and paying for something in cash for 3.2 million, you put in 25% of that, get a lower interest rate, and then basically drive leverage to accelerate your return. So in this instance, I know it looks like a lot of money, but it actually it's good. Um, and this is the amortization table, right? Every date that you'll actually be paying a mortgage payment, the payments are always all the same. If you notice, right, 12, 8, 8, 8 72. And then this is um, principal, which is from 12888, you're playing basically two, you're, <laughs> you're paying $10,000 in interest and $2,883 in principal. Um, uh, all mortgages are front loaded um, in terms of um, residential. Most people own a house five to seven years. So you pay off all this interest, you refinance or go out and get a new loan, and then you kind of start all over again. That's how banks make their money. Um, but, you know, if you end up holding it like we do, we don't sell anything over time, you can tell the interest amount gets smaller, right? We started off the payments 12 and our interest rate was 10. As you go along, all of a sudden it flips, right? So now you're paying $9,000 in principal and $4,000 in interest. So they flip. It just takes a little while uh, to get there. Um, and then what's interesting here is here's payment one. And here's payment 360. If you wanted to say, okay, you know something, my term for my loan, so they're going to give me a 30 year amortization, but they want me to refinance in five years or 60 months, you can actually just up here, you can type in 60 and hit update. And then if you scroll to the bottom, right, this is your 60th uh, payment, and your balance at that point will be 2.2. So sometimes when you're planning ahead five years from now, you want to know, okay, what is my um, refinance amount going to be when I refinance in five years or seven years or three years or 15 years, whatever it is. That way you've got just a quick at a glance in terms of what your number is going to be. And again, feel free to jump in if you guys have any questions. Um, all right. So uh, if you have if we leave this at zero, if you have three out of these four numbers, you can always solve for the fourth. So let's uh, let's clear everything. And we're gonna say, we're gonna buy a building for 1.5 million, okay? So 1.5, uh, oh, I gotta get out of here, hold on. Okay, negative, present value. Um, and then we're going to say um, that we're gonna put 25% down again. So times, that'll leave us with 75%, right? All right, so 1.125 is our note. 
And then what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to say, someone gives us um, a, th a 30 year note. So 300 months. And um, the payment's gonna be 8,500 a month, okay? You've gone and you found um, a seller that is not going through a broker or a broker that is um, creative and is working with a seller to try and get the seller to take payments back. So we looked at a, um, I can't remember now, I think it was 82 units in South Carolina where the owner was gonna take back financing. Uh, we also bought a property with 254 units where the owner took back financing. So it is not very common in the bigger properties, but it's not uncommon in the smaller properties. So I'm just naming two of the ones that we were able to do. So this guy's thinking, okay, listen, you know, I'm making 8,500 bucks a month now, or I'm making five grand a month now from my property. I don't want all the money at once. I want monthly payments. So why don't you guys give me 8,500 bucks a month and we'll call it even. So you put in your numbers and you go, okay, well, let me see what the interest rate is. If I'm paying you 8,500 bucks a month on this amount. Oops, wait, we did something wrong. Hold on. Uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I know what I did. Okay, hold on for a second. Uh, one, five, one, two, three, four, five, um, times 0.75 equals, all right, so I messed that up. See, anybody can do this. Um, all right, so your actual interest per year would be 7.75%, which two years ago would have been outrageous. Uh, you know, now, you know, maybe not so much. <laughs> But still, I mean, for um, for uh, an owner to finance um, the property at 7.75 interest, um, the rates that we got on those two that I was talking about, uh, one was 5%, and the other one, the big one, the 250 unit one was 3%, um, and no payments for the first 18 months. So you can do all sorts of creative stuff if you've got a seller that is... Uh, um, an owner seller, if you're working through a broker, a lot of times you just have to shop it, all right, to mortgage brokers. But this is crazy. I mean, 7.75, you know, even today, you can find a considerably uh, lower rate than that. So let's say that you decide um, that you're going to go out to your mortgage broker or to a local credit union or something like that and try and figure out, okay, you know something, what can you give me? And they give you 5% and 30 years or 5.5% and 25 years. We saw in the last example that changing just a couple of points, in this example would be two and three quarter points, so that's huge. You're gonna put a tremendous amount of money back in your pocket. So again, if you have three out of four, um, you can get the fourth one. So let's do one more and then we'll do, so let's say, that you are trying to figure out how much equity the person has in their property or what the original mortgage was for, right? If they don't share that with you, but they give you a couple of different things, you can actually solve for it, right? So let's say that they tell you, yeah, you know, my annual pay my monthly payment is $17,000 a month, right? So that's your payment. And I got a note um, that I'd like you to assume at 5.9. And it was, um, let's see, uh, 20 years. So it was 240 months. All right, so value of the mortgage is $2.4 million. $2 million. Um, now, obviously you'd have to find out and do the amortization schedule and try and figure out, well, sir or ma'am, you know, how long have you owned it? 10 years, 15 years, five years, whatever it is. You can look at your amortization schedule to figure out about what their payoff is. And then you can kind of figure out how much negotiating room there is. For several years there, there was no negotiating room at all. Um, prior to the craziness with the interest rates, now it's kind of going back to the way that it used to be. Um, prior to that, um, you could get a property for 80, 90% of asking price. And those times are coming back if this uh, these rates continue to go up and inflation is where it is, where you won't be paying over asking price. Um, so um, 
a lot of times you want to know how much equity the person has because you know if they have three million dollars worth, worth of equity and they're asking five million there's some room there for you to negotiate maybe you offer 4.3 or 4.4 4.5 knowing that they're not up against the wall with a note for 4.7 and there's no way in the world they're going to take your uh your offer so hopefully that makes sense all right last example um, and then we'll go to questions. I don't even know what time is it. How are we doing on time? Uh, wow, we went way too far. So we'll stay longer for questions. All right, so the last example is an owner financing that he wants 7% or she wants 7%. Um, the price is 2 million. So 2 million times 0.75 equals negative present value. Um, and 20 year amortization. So uh, in this example, we're going to do 240 um, input and then our payment. Um, and then what you'll find, and, and this is um, something that I want you guys to consider when you're buying um, in certain areas, a lot of times a local credit union um, or a local bank will know the area. And this is actually something that happened. A local bank knew the property understood the property, understood the um, the neighborhood, um, understood our track record and what we're bringing in. So this actually changed from, let's just do the math here, 11 times 12 is uh, 139. And these guys were phenomenal, by the way. So they got it down to um, 5%. And then I can't remember if it was... Um, 25 years or 30 years, but let's just do 25 to be safe. So 300 months. All right. So our payment dropped to 8.7 times 12. All right. So we were paying 139 um, with the original offer um, and the local, it wasn't a credit union, it was a local bank, a small bank. It only had two branches. Um, we're paying um, 105. So that's a $36,000 um, net um, uh, savings that goes straight into our pocket. So hopefully all that made sense. Let me get out of here and go back to uh, stop sharing if I can. I can see everybody again. All right. Did I totally confuse everybody? <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully it was simple. <laughs> but, um, and again, you know, we've got like 15 or 20 people on here or something like that. So we won't make you guys do it in chat, but anybody have any questions? whether about this, we'll stay on longer because I went, I ran way over. Nicole always says that she talks too long, man, I killed it. So um, I apologize for that. So we'll stay as long, you know, another 15, 20 minutes as however long you want. If you would have any questions, we can end it as well. But anybody have any questions at all? Doesn't have to be about this, can be about anything real estate related anyway. All right. So how about this? Any suggestions on topics you'd like to uh, learn about in the future? We've got like the next six or seven kind of lined up already, um, but we also want to be able to um, uh, get some topics that are of interest to people. So any uh, burning questions, things you want answered that it's like, wow, you know something, if you could teach 15 or 20 minutes, um, uh, on this, it would be really helpful. I could actually use that in my business. Um, anything at all come to mind? Yes, no. <laughs> Got a quiet Hi, crowd. What? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, James. This is Marissa. Hi, Marissa. I um, um, was actually driving your entire presentation, so oh. um, I kind of got to see some of it while, I guess, being dangerous on the road. Right. <laughs> Uh, my question to you is, is I, I missed this part. Um, can you tell me again the um, financial calculator, the name where I could um, find it online? And also for this recording, since I wasn't actually really able to look at it, will, right. they, will it be provided um, in another a format or will I be able to, to view it again? Yeah. So what we do is um, I try and edit this over the next couple of days. And okay. then we announce the next uh, Teaching Tuesday we'll actually put a link just in the email that you guys got at the bottom. There's a link to our YouTube channel and it's posted right there. Um, okay. And Marissa, you have access to the course. And this, yes. what, what I taught basically right here is in uh, module seven. It's the second part of module seven. 
So, okay. um, and then what I will do is um, I will, I've got your email. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Jane. 10 B2 calculator is what it is. Okay. And if you're still driving, don't worry about it. Just send me an email and uh, I'll, I've got your email. I'll send it to you. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Great. Right. Hey, James, see. this is Shane. Can I ask Hi. a question? Mm -hmm. oh. Yes, I'm here. Hey. Um, so going back to the calculator again. So um, I'm thinking for instead of going to the bank, sometimes you need to work out the term with the seller financing. Let's say if the seller is going to carry back a certain amount. Right. Um, some situation that you know you might, you know, talk about, okay, I'm gonna pay you like five percent for the turn of 30 years but it's going to balloon in 10 years for example right then how would you put that on the contract and work out the ending balance in 10 years i guess you can pull the amortization table and just yep. exactly pick out the ending of the 10 year and that will be your payout amount at 10 years right exactly right yeah you could put that in there or you could basically just say you know whatever the balance is on this note on this specific date you know which is 10 years from today you know, will be paid off in full by, you know, refi or financing or just don't even put that down. Just say we'll be paid off in full. I see. And another example, I think Nicole mentioned this a while back when I was on a class. There was a way she's saying that instead of paying both principal and interest, she sort of put it out in the contract that the initial payment just all pull it into principal directly. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying about that one? So how does that work out in the calculator? So um, what you would do is you would take those, let's say you figured out what your mortgage is going to be on the whole amount, right? Yeah. Let's say it's going to be 2.4 or whatever it is. You would take those 12 payments that you're going to put towards principal and subtract those from your mortgage amount figure okay. out for that mortgage and they say, okay, great. You know, in month 13, we're going to put a $2.4 million mortgage is now worth 2.3. Therefore our mortgage will start at 2.3 and we'll pay off that balance in 10 years. Does that make sense? Ah, I see. Okay. You make it sound so simple. You basically just subtract the difference and starting the new balance again from that yeah. new year. Under okay. Understand that, that, um, and I, I had to learn this the hard way, but um, absolutely everything is negotiable. Everything is negotiable. Um, we've done some crazy stuff, um, you know, 3% interest on a note. Uh, I'm sorry, on that first property, no payments for the first, uh, what was it, 12, 15 months, something like that. Um, we even got the guy to carry back the down payment um, at a higher interest rate to carry back the down payment. So all we came to the table with was closing costs. Um, you can actually, in a lot of instances, when you're dealing with um, an owner operator, they're like, you know something, I just, I don't want all the money, give me like, you know, whatever, X amount of dollars, I want to pay off some debt and, you know, go travel around the world or whatever it is. I just want to make my $5,000 a month or whatever it is. So you can actually work it out. So you might be paying one, two, three percent interest on the money. As long as they get their five thousand dollars, remember it's 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 satisfying what they're looking for, right? It's 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 got to be a win for me too. But I'm just trying to help them get to whatever point they want to. And if that means that they want five thousand dollars a month, and I can make it work for me, and I end up paying two or three percent interest, I'm absolutely going to do it. Now, if the five thousand dollar means I'm paying eight or nine percent interest, I'm going to tell them, sir, ma'am, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Um, but you know, maybe you can work something else out. So usually the rule of thumb is either price, give me a better price or give me better terms, one or the other, or you can kind of mix it together. But there's some wonderful deals out there. You guys will start seeing a lot more deals coming up in the next six to 12 months. Got it. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. And then someone had a question in here. Crystal, quick question for a property management company. Does each state that you operate in do you need to have a broker's license in each state or does a broker's license in one state suffice? Um, so you don't have to be a broker at all when, when you buy a commercial property. You have to open an LLC in the state that you're buying the property in, but property management don't care if you're a broker, not a broker, it doesn't matter to them. 
So hopefully that answers your question. For non-owners. Crystal, you might have to unmute because I don't understand the question. Or you can just okay. email me directly. Okay, so my question is, if you um, say you're, you're, you're buying properties in five states and you operate in all five states and you have a broker's license in one of those states, if people come to you and say, hey, can you manage my property in three states, would you then have to have a broker's license in each of those states or would you just need a broker's license in one state? Okay, so that's, I understand the question now. So that actually is state specific. Some states require you to have a broker's license to do property management, and some states do not. Um, I, what's the rule here in Maryland? Do you know? Are you from Maryland, Crystal? I think you are. No, I'm, I'm actually in Ohio. Ohio. Okay. Sorry. Um, I, I guess it's a different Crystal that I know. Um, so do you require one in Ohio? We do, yes. Okay. Um, I don't know. Jane in Florida, do you know? Sorry, caught you unaware. I, I think you I think you do sometimes need that broker uh, yeah. license to be a property manager. You, okay. Unless right. they're your own properties. And a lot of people try to get away with that with, you know, old friends and family. But after a while, that's not cool. Right. Yeah, totally get it. So so I would check with each specific state that you're going into, because right. um, obviously there's an expense behind getting a broker's license. And if the state doesn't require it, obviously, you know, you want to save that money for for yourself. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anybody else? I got one question. What's okay. the difference between a HP 12C and that 10? Which What's the number of that one, 10? 10? 10B. Yeah, 10 what's the difference? Yeah. Between HP 12C. Because for a long time, I had learned how to use HP 12C. I haven't used it in a long time, so I have to refresh my memory. But... Mm -hmm everyone was was using a while ago 12c and now i'm seeing people use that 10 b2 yeah b2 so was was yours like a standalone calculator or was it on your phone standalone but i think i might have download downloaded that one there because i had taken a training in it not too long ago okay. i think i have that one on my phone but i just on my desk here i still have the 12c right that was you know, prevalent, everybody was using at one time. Right. I think Nicole had that originally, you know, as a, as a standalone. And then we actually moved to this one. Um, I'm sure your work, yours works perfectly fine. You know, this is just the one that, that we found that we really like. If you're already trained and know how to do a lot of the stuff on the one you currently have, and you don't have to carry it around, you have it on your phone. You know, I would say just stick with it. You don't have to get this one. Yeah, but the, I think I have, I think I downloaded that one. I got to go on my phone. <laughs> check. <laughs> I know I have apps on my phone too that I'm like, oh my God, where did that come from? I can't remember downloading that. My daughter's laughing at me because I've got like six pages of apps and they have like, you know, three blocks with everything in there. But anyway, so I guess I'm old school. Um, any other questions? All right, I will leave you with you guys recording this? Yep. And um, I will send um, the email when we announce the next um, Teaching Tuesday. Um, when I send it out, I don't know if you remember getting the email for this one, but it says, you know, Zoom, invite. And then below that, for this one, it had the link for the calculator. And then below that, it'll have the replay. And then yeah, you click on the that. replay and it takes you to our YouTube channel. And we're actually going to have a channel just for Teaching Tuesdays. But let me do this. Let me put this in. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Um, all right. So here's, can I copy this? Um, uh, hold on a second. See if I can copy this and put this in the chat for you. Maybe you can just click on it. I'm not sure if you can or not, but we can try. Um, so let's see. Listen, I, I do. I just found the app. I just forgot it was there. <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny. Um, I don't know if that's a clickable link or not, but that's our YouTube channel. Um, and then, um, for those of you that, um, 
I know there, we've got some residential people that want to get into multifamily. We've got some residential people. And then we've also got some um, people that uh, do a little bit of both. So that right there, oops, that bit.ly one is a seminar that actually Nicole recorded um, a couple of months ago. Um, it's got a lot of information in it. It's a couple of hours long. So, you know, if you want to watch it, you know, set aside a couple of hours, but she talks about like NOI and um, a bunch of other terminologies, the sniff test and stuff like that. So there's some good information on there as well. Um, and, uh, and hopefully you guys get something out of that. So um, any other questions I can answer for anybody? Going once, going twice, going three times, Jane. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great night. Good seeing everybody. Take care. Thank you Have for joining. Have a great joining. night, everybody. Bye. See you. See you next week. All right. Bye-bye.